Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangi, and welcome back to Wellness Wednesday. What makes your garden grow? Water and sunshine. What makes your spirit grow? Knowing that should be mine. So good morning. It is early. I don't have my watch on. Um, I came down here about 5.30, so it's somewhere around there. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to have a quick chat before the day gets started. And I am happy to be here with you all. I hope you all had a wonderful week. We are coming out of the week of Thanksgiving. So a lot of you are probably uh, scrambling, getting ready for the holidays, the Christmas holidays. Um, we need to buy a new tree because when our basement wall fell, um, we had stored our Christmas tree uh, along that wall on a shelf. And so it's gone. But Jack did find totes of uh, our other Christmas decorations in the garage. So we may go through those. Um, we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are. We just had Parker's birthday last night, or it was yesterday, and we celebrated again last night um, with uh, Jack's mom and dad and sister. And yeah, so it's it's just been really a sweet week. My baby is now 16, <laughs> and I don't know if I can handle it or not. But uh, but anyway, so um, if you are new here, Wellness Wednesday is how I um, share my wellness journey uh, to give you a small recap. Um, I'm 41 years old. I'm about I'm about five seven and a half five eight somewhere around there, and um, I have a lot of inflammation, a lot of stiffness. I have an eight hour desk job, and um, my poor way of eating, especially this year, um, I've gained an incredible amount of weight, um, about 30 pounds, and in a very short amount of time, plus all of the inflammation. Um, the stiffness, the tiredness, the achiness, I'm over it. I'm over it. So here we are yet again with me trying to lose weight yet again. And um, I am doing that by eating a ketogenic way of eating and uh, right now stretching, working my way up to strength training. Now, when it comes to keto, this is something that I've done a lot of research on. I have eaten this way before. Our ancestors ate this way and I feel my absolute best eating this way. Um, and I'm gonna take the words from my friend Shakima. I live my best life on keto, period. Um, and, and it is absolutely true. I heard her say that in one of her videos and I was like, yes, that is how I feel. Dehumidifier. Hopefully you guys can still hear me because I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> Um, so what we do here uh, on Wellness, Wellness Wednesday, like I said, is this is my accountability. This is my journal. And I love the community that happens in the comment section. And then some of you are also messaging me on Facebook and you're messaging me on Instagram. And I love it. I love the little notes. Hey, check out this recipe. Um, hey, I want to let you know that this is what I'm going through right now. I love it. So please, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll put my um, Instagram handle down here, or um, you can message me uh, on our Freedom Homestead Facebook page and keep in touch. I, I, wa I wanna hear it, it helps me, and I want to be able to help you all as much as I can. Last week, um, I didn't have very much movement on the scale. Um, I said that the scale had dipped down to 209, but then that morning it was back up to, what, 211? Um, this, this week of Thanksgiving, I lost weight. I lost weight, and I'll tell you how I did it. Um, I stuck to the plan. The plan was um, that I was going to eat keto. I took keto foods with me. I made um, a keto-friendly uh, cranberry sauce which by the way, I'm not gonna share that recipe because it ended up not being great. Um, the, the cranberry sauce was good, but then once I put it in the fridge overnight, it got crunchy. So I'm not gonna do that. But my friend Shakima uh, made a keto um, cranberry sauce over on her channel, and I'm gonna make that next time. So I will link her video if I can find it uh, down below. It's where she's prepping for Thanksgiving, her Thanksgiving meal and it's a slow cooker cranberry sauce recipe. I'm gonna be making that next time. 
Um, so I made sugar-free cranberry sauce. I made uh, mashed cauliflower. I made the deviled eggs and I made um, keto friendly dump cake. Uh, I'll find the recipe and I will link it below. It is um, a keto Duncan Hines cake mix is what you use as the topping with a bunch of butter and cinnamon, but the filling is like pumpkin, heavy whipping cream, eggs, pumpkin spice, and salt. I think that's all there was. And um, so that's what I took and I kept it keto. The only thing that I had, there were two things that I had that I know were not keto friendly. Um, one was my mother-in-law's dressing. We look forward all year to my mother-in-law's dressing. It is like, it is the best. <laughs> it is the best dressing ever. And so I did, I had a small square. Um, the other thing that I had that I'm pretty sure wasn't keto friendly, it was, um, it was sugar free, but I don't think it was low carb. And that was my um, husband's aunt made a fluff, I guess you call it like a fluff uh, pie, but it's like sugar free gelatin, cream cheese, uh, fruit, that kind of stuff. And that's what I had. I had just a, a sliver of that because I wanted to try it. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Um, anyway, so that is what I did for Thanksgiving. I did fantastic. I'm very happy with how well I did. And because of that, I lost a few pounds this week. Now, I said on, my, uh, on our Monday Night Live that I had lost two pounds. Well, the next morning, Tuesday morning, which is yesterday, I weighed myself and I was at 208 even. So that is a three pound weight loss on Thanksgiving week. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Um, and again, if you're new here, we don't put emphasis on the scale. The emphasis is on how you feel. And I feel amazing. I can tell um, a little bit in my face, a little bit in my belly that um, the inches are going down. So that's, that's a good thing. So from starting Wellness Wednesday a few weeks ago to today, so far I've lost seven pounds. And again, I know that's still probably inflammation. I am in ketosis and I know that not because I don't do the, all the little tests and the sticks and all that. I just go by what's happening. Um, and one of the things is uh, frequent urination. You're you're flushing out, um, you're flushing out your inflammation. So one thing that I've also been doing um, is I've been sharing this book. It's called The One Thing by Gary Keller, and um, this is a book that we read for work. It is it is about goal setting and protecting your goals and how to reach your goals. It is the, it is not about real estate. <laughs> And um, so last week we talked about the focusing question, which is what is one thing you can do that will make everything else easier or unnecessary? And um, this week I want to talk about the accountability cycle. And this is in chapter 17, which is about the three commitments. I'm not gonna go over the other two. Um, I will leave a link uh, for this book and it, it really is fantastic. I do not do self-help books. I do not generally enjoy them, but I have really got so much out of this book. <clears throat> like I said last week, it's like whatever you're dealing with, it feels like this book is speaking to. Um, so if you're trying to build your business, it feels like it's speaking to building your business. If it's to weight loss, it feels like it's talking about weight loss. I mean, um, it's just, it's a really cool book. I'm sorry, I said chapter 17, it's chapter 16, The Three Commitments. But we're gonna talk about the third commitment, which is live the accountability cycle. I'm gonna read a little bit from here and then um, discuss how I feel like it applies to the health journey. All right. Taking complete ownership of your outcomes by holding no one but yourself responsible for them is the most powerful thing you can do to drive your success. As such, accountability is most likely the most important of the three commitments. Without it, your journey down the path of mastery will be cut short the moment you encounter a challenge. Without it, you won't figure out how to break through the ceiling of achievement you'll hit along the way. Accountable people absorb setbacks and keep going. Accountable people per persevere through problems and keep pushing forward. 
Accountable people are results oriented and never defend actions. Sk okay. Never defend actions, skill levels, models, systems, or relationships that just aren't getting the job done. They bring their best to whatever it takes without reservation. Accountable people achieve results others only dream of. When life happens, you can either be the author of your life or the victim of it. I'm going to read that part again. When life happens, you can either be the author of your life or the victim of it. Those are your only two choices, accountable or unaccountable. This may sound harsh, but it's true. Every day we choose one approach or the other, and the consequences follow us forever. I mean, right? <laughs> when life happens, you can either be the author of your life or the victim of it. Okay, so when life happens, this is what an accountable person does. They get on with it, find solutions, own it, acknowledges reality and seeks reality. A victim mentality avoids reality, fights reality, blames, personal excuses, waits, and hopes. You, Whenever you find yourself not achieving the goals that you want, where do you, where do you fall? Do you say, well, I mean, if my mom wouldn't stop pushing that uh, extra pie on me or do you say you know what I messed up I had that extra piece of pie I knew when I took the next bite that I shouldn't do it but I did it I'm just gonna do better next time which one do you fall under if you keep letting life happen to you and you are not accepting it and owning it you're gonna keep you're gonna keep falling into the same uh, into the same habit um, now, I know that I said in the beginning of this year, I had a stressful year, um, and it did. Life happened big time this year, and um, I hope that I have not made myself sound like a victim. I hope that I feel responsible. I know that the choices that I made are, are what got me to where I am. No one forced me to do it. My circumstances didn't force me to do it. It stressed me out, yes but I was still in control of my actions the whole time, right? I wasn't like, you know, a mindless zombie stuffing my face with all of the fast food and, and all of the sugar and, you know, um, I absolutely did it to myself. Yeah, so we have to be accountable. If we keep, if we keep avoiding reality, if we keep uh, blaming others, if we keep making excuses, if we keep waiting and hoping that something's gonna happen without actually putting anything into action, then we are not going to reach our goals. Uh, another quote from the book is, no one is born a victim. It's simply an attitude or an approach. Highly successful people are clear about their role in the events of their life. Mm. Anyway. That just really got to me. Um, so I hope I hope it helps you in some way. I hope going forward, um, if you aren't already taking uh, responsibility for your own actions, are you working out? Are you drinking your water? Are you um, making good choices with each bite, each meal? Yes, you're gonna. We're all gonna mess up. We're all gonna mess up. But it is no one's fault but our own. Okay. So if you want to get healthy, you have to own it. It is your job. It is your job. It is no one else's to make sure that the meals that you eat um, are, are in line with what your goals are. Um, no one is going to, okay, come on. You got you to gotta get down there and do your exercise. I mean, you might have someone that's trying to help you, but you can still do it or not. Um, but even if you don't have someone encouraging you, or maybe you haven't found a partner to work out with, um, it's still on you. You still have to do it, right? Anyway, so I hope this was helpful for you guys today. I know that that really gave me a kick in the pants. Any goal that you have, it is your goal. You have to do it. Don't be the victim. Don't be a victim of circumstance. So don't be the victim. Be the author of your life not the victim of it. Okay? 
all right so i hope this puts enough pep in your step to get you going for another week and um i hope that you all are doing well so let me know down in the comments how did you do this week did you blow your thanksgiving if you did that's okay i hope you made the very next day the very next meal the right one all right i hope you guys have a great week and until next time remember to be vigilant be prayerful be prepared god bless you and your families and we'll catch you in the next one bye guys